The Inspector General of Police, Mohammed Adamu, says 205 critical security assets, corporate facilities and private property were burnt or vandalized during the MSAS protest. During a virtual conference with senior police officers on Friday, the IGP said statistics collated between October 11, when the protest assumed a national dimension, and October 27, indicated that 14 states recorded major violence. Lagos, Edo, Delta, Oyo, Kanu, Plateau, Oshu, Ondo, Ogun, Rivers, Abia, Imo, Ekiti, and the Federal Capital Territory. The police boss said 71 public warehouses and 248 privately owned stores were looted. He said there are 51 civilian fatalities with 37 injured and 22 policemen were murdered with 26 others injured during the protest. Adam said that 10 firearms, including eight AK-47 rifles, cattered away during the attacks in police stations and a locally made pistol had been recovered. We're now joined by security consultant Tony Ofoyeto. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Um, what is the implication of this figure coupled with the latest directive that police officers should defend themselves? Sorry, hi, hi. Good morning. Um, it's a pleasure having me. Uh, well, basically, you know, um, when you hear of such a figure, the implication would be that the uh, the policemen would uh, be morally down. It will affect their psyche. It would also send to the level of um, um, lack of safety, even in them. Don't forget that they are first human beings before they are police officers or before they are law enforcement agents. Uh, it takes the living to protect the living. And I think that that is one thing that um, an average Indian should come in terms with now. Uh, you would also have observed that um, in some selected areas, you have called boys to getting very freely. I, I think on Saturday also in the Kosovo area of global state, um, called boys were busy operating as if they're still in the country. And I'm sure you've also seen in pocket uh, street robbery, uh, traffic and robbery and all those stuff like that. And that simply means that if, if we don't um, attend to this issue as quick as possible, we as Nigerians have to give the policemen the moral support, the encouragement and the assurance that they are also safe for them to protect us. The police and the people have a common enemy, which are the criminals. Um, the people are not the enemy of the police, the police are not the enemy of the people. But both are the enemies of the criminal. So if the criminal, criminal is succeeding in setting the people against the police or the police against the people, the implication is that the criminals will have a field day while the police and the people will suffer from it. So the, I, I think that it is imperative for us as human beings to understand this term very well. Uh, because I have also seen in some places where uh, people are very nonchalant about the fact that police are not on the street. Um, but we must understand that it has a global implication. This is the Ember Moon. In the Ember Moon, people would be criminals would be interested in seeing how they make money out of the vulnerable. And um, as it is now, even the vulnerable, the only last move they have is the police. Now the police are not functioning the way they ought to function. I think the best we could just do is to encourage the police I plead with them that they should be magnanimous enough to understand that uh, not that the people hated them, uh, but maybe because of bottled up grievances, anger, and the like, um, from both sides anyway. And uh, that is why you are seeing a situation like this. But like I will always say, if it's time to heal the wound, it's no longer the time to trust the wound. I think it's time for us to heal. Um, what, what, what is your take on the um, conspicuous absence of officers on our roads uh, at the moment? Um, is the sad incident uh, that was highlighted and the deaths of their colleagues adequate license for what some are describing as dereliction of duty? Well, um, I think my own first reaction 
to the withdrawal or tactical withdrawal of the police in the streets as a fallout of the end transporting. It is basically that when the police want to pass a message across that uh, we are more useful than we think. And I think that that message has been well understood already, uh, talking about the implication. Uh, but um, if it's too further than that, uh, you would agree with me that the damages may be too devastating. Uh, it was the withdrawal of the police from the street that led to the burning of BRT buses, that led to the looting, uh, the massive and unprecedented looting and a general desire street. Um, some shop right, uh, some shopping malls, showing the visual shops and the like, um, all over the country, um, palaces and warehouses and the like. It was basically because the police withdrew from its uh, primary duty. And I'm not aware anywhere in the world where police will go on strike. But I think it has happened now uh, because tactically uh, the police is, as you see it now, um, is on strike. Uh, even if they say they are not on strike, uh, there are different types of strikes. If you have a, a strike where you sit in the office and you are doing nothing, it's also a strike. You know, work to rule and all this stuff like that. What, what can and be so done? What, what can be done? Yeah, please. Uh, Mr. Foyet, what, what can be done to motivate these police officers back on their job? We understand the um, demoralizing impact of the burning of their places of work and the killing of their colleagues, but um, they have a job to do irrespective of what happened. So what can be done to motivate them to get back on their feet? Um, I, I think just as we are fighting for justice for the end tax protection. Uh, number one thing I also want the government to also look at is justice for police officers that were uh, brutally and ungodly murdered uh, by hoodlums, not necessarily the protection. And uh, those that uh, were injured too, uh, the government should speedily take 100% of um, their medical bills and those that died, their children should be given automatic scholarship, even to university level. Uh, the police uh, authority should not be in a haste to drive away the family from police um, uh, barracks. And if they have to move them from police barracks, they should make alternative accommodation of not less than a minimum of two bedroom flats, and uh, for the very senior officers, three bedroom flats that they should go for life. Um, I think these are things that I think can motivate uh, the um, police officers to know that whatever they do for the country is not in vain. But if the government brings politics into it and says, go back to your work, there is no problem. The people's morale is already dampened already. Don't forget that they are still earning the fee not of 50,000 naira, 70,000 naira per month. So it's most likely going to be, if you force me to go back to work, it's going to be business as usual. And the average Nigerian is looking forward to a reformed police mentally, psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually, and professionally. Yeah, but, but in, in so spite these of these agitations, uh, Mr. Falaya, the, the in part, um, I'll say it all, I beg your pardon, um, in spite of these um quest to improve the welfare of police officers. From the videos that was, uh, that was playing uh, while you spoke, there still seemed to be a disconnect, uh, 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 for lack of a better word, a trust deficit uh, that needs to be addressed. How do you think, while the police is trying to rebuild, what more can they do to also rebuild the trust deficit that seemed to uh, perpetually plague them? Well, uh, when you talk about trust deficit, I think it is the leadership, um, it is at the top. The, the leadership um, at the national level has one, come, one accept the fact that there is a trust deficit. Now, because if the government, as it is now, and to my own best of understanding, they have not even accepted that there is a trust deficit. And that is why they seek to a lot of politics I still bring a lot of propaganda and make belief to what ordinarily people know are for. So the first thing is when the government agrees that there is trust deficit, that 90% of Nigerians don't trust them. That is one. Now once they believe that and they are able to come out with policies 
and they now apply speed to the implementation of the policy. Now, given a set timeline on each of the policy, each of the decisions that have, they have I, I decided to execute, they should give it a timeline. You should also give it a fair, um, uh, what do you call it now, uh, publicity. Let the people know that we promise that we are going to do X and Z within two months, and we have done it, and people are seeing it. Now, it's going to take a gradual process to gain that trust. I must right. tell you the truth. It's right. not going to be an organizing, but uh, the government can do it. Uh, Mr. Tony Foyeton, thank you very much for sharing your time and your insight on the latest development. All right. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.